Determined to get a full day of hiking in, the trail family woke up early, grabbed some food to go from the general store, and got a ride by 9.15. After hiking together for a while, we stopped at a spring, and I decided it was time for my packed out sub sandwich. Shortly after our stop at the spring, I crashed hard. I'm not sure if it was too much town food or it being so long since my last rest day, but I took a nap right on the side of the trail in order to have the energy to continue. I made it to another spring 17 miles out of town where we had dinner before continuing on to camp. The trees at camp were thick and creaky, making for an uneasy sleep. Kid even had a night terror that he was being attacked by a bear and I woke up to his yells in the middle of the night. I assured him there was no bear and we both fell back asleep. In the morning, we had several miles to water. That water happened to be the headwaters of the Missouri River. We took a break to collect and read the plaques at the Sacagawea Memorial, describing the journey she and Lewis and Clark took to reach this spot more than 200 years earlier. Welcome to another edition of Will It Rain On Us Today on the CDT. This is what the clouds look like. Will it rain on us, kid? What do you think? No. No, a definitive no. Oh, well, I guess you need to see this part of the sky to like really get the full picture. Uh, my guess is it's at least gonna sprinkle. That's just the way it goes. Today has been pretty chill. We left town yesterday, got in a good 21 miles. Only night hiked a little bit to camp. It's been a lot of off trail water in this stretch and Today we're doing around 25, but had some off trail water, like almost all our water has been off trail. Went through the Sacagawea Memorial, which is really neat. Uh, I bestrided the headwaters of the Missouri River, or one of the tributaries really. It's not like the official headwaters. And had some nice breaks so far. Had some cruisy trails so far. We're walking through a burn area right now. Uh, from a fire that I believe happened last year. Hoping it doesn't rain because um, in burn areas, the ground, ground is dry and then the water doesn't soak in and it gets flash floody sometimes. Um, but we'll see. Trying to get to town by Monday the 22nd. So that, because we booked a place to have a zero in Darby. Uh, we're really looking forward to that. We haven't zeroed since Du Bois which we looked today and that was like over three weeks and 450 miles ago. So pretty proud of us for that. We normally <laughs> accidentally zero in like every town and we've been consciously avoiding that with the promise of a reward of a zero in Darby. And so we're super stoked. Um, there's apparently a really good restaurant there. It has very big portions and cheap food, so Montana Cafe, we're coming for you. The rest of the day was spent observing the sky and determining whether we could safely continue to hike through exposed areas. We got lucky with timing and made it to camp unscathed, aka dry. But as we were eating dinner, it started to rain, so we got back into our tents and I cuddled up with this mama spider for a good night's sleep. Don't worry, she was outside the tent. I started the next morning alone and ran into a fox, then two deer. We shared a peaceful moment before I hiked on for a mostly calm day. I've said it before, but the really long days tend to be the least memorable and the least eventful. In the evening, we caught High Roller, who hadn't seen Ollie for a few hours. He hoped we had seen her, but we hadn't, so we all hiked on and over a super steep pass. Just as it was getting dark, High Roller found her on the other side. We hiked off trail to a questionable but beautiful camp spot and ate dinner in the dark. Our campsite really came to life the next morning. The lake we camped at created a beautiful reflection of the surrounding mountains in the early morning calm, and I was sad to leave it. We are on day one, two, three, four, day four out of Lead Ore. Did a 21 the first day, 25 the next, 30 yesterday. Yesterday was pretty Bruisey, but I definitely felt really tired. Had a lot of different intervals. Had to kind of up the sugar intake to keep me going. It feels like we've been getting to bed at 10, 10, 30 almost every night. Just cause like, I want to take breaks and I don't hike that fast anymore. So 
it is what it is. As monstrous as my food bag was when I was leaving town with five days of food, I come into town probably with no food. Did an assessment this morning and probably gonna eat a lot of my snacks today and probably try and conserve some for tomorrow. I've got like eight bars, eight or nine bars, so I might eat six bars on like a 30, so I'm gonna eat maybe a bigger lunch. I did pack an extra dinner, so I can eat that, but whew. The rest of the day was gorgeous with ridge walks and mountain views, the only downside being the smoke plumes we could see in the distance. I hiked alone again for much of the day, leapfrogging with Ollie before catching Kid at an old cabin. Although we'd planned to go farther so we could be closer to town, we were all pretty beat and not excited about the upcoming steep three mile climb. We decided to camp early and resolved to wake up early to make up for it. We were up before the sun and started our climb to water. I banged my trekking poles together due to rumors of bears in the area, and I made it to the top without suffering too much. We ran into trail crews and I thanked them as I passed before hiking through long stretches of a recent burn area. The heat and lack of shade due to the burned trees made the hike into town feel long and miserable. Ollie and I met up at the last water, which was again, unfortunately, off trail before knocking out the final few miles into town. We hitched together from Chief Joseph Pass and after a brief car ride, arrived in Darby, Montana for a much anticipated zero day. Several of us split an Airbnb and made the most of our town stay. We back flushed our filters, did laundry, cooked food, resupplied and stuffed our faces at the infamous Montana Cafe. We also reckoned with the fact that we were almost on our last section of maps and the end of our hike was looming. Leaving Darby was a struggle. We prolonged our departure well into the afternoon, and of course, our hitch took a while too. We were eventually picked up by a nice local, and we made use of the daylight we had left. The sky was very stormy, and it started to rain, so Kit and I called it and set up camp. We had picked up a new tent since our old one was leaking, and unfortunately discovered this one leaked too. We just started using a new tent. No better way to test it. And shit like this. Hike the CDT. Three mile day. We did like 10 miles out of town today. You probably can't even hear this. I don't even know why I'm bothering you. Ooh. The next day, we walked through more burn areas and ominous clouds were the backdrop for miles of burned trees. It hailed on and off all afternoon. It's hailing. I'm trying to hide under a tree. It's not really working. I feel like... Can you hear that? I feel like everybody talks about thunderstorms in Colorado on the CDT. And I wasn't quite mentally prepared. You can see it back there and hear it probably, but look, it's nice right over here. Anyway, side drive. I was not quite mentally prepared for the ones in Idaho and Montana, and they are plentiful. Right before I got to a stream that was off trail and behind a long obstacle course of deadfall, the skies opened up and dropped some of the largest hail I've ever seen. We were forced to take shelter near one of the only live trees and put a sleeping pad and ground sheet over our heads to keep from getting pelted. This is how you stay safe from that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Scary. Uh, just stop raining. I don't care about the radio. It's that hill. It's been doing this all day. When it finally stopped, we collected water and continued on over more blowdowns. On the way, we discovered the extent of the hailstorm. It looked like winter in some areas, with hail coating the ground completely. Seeing so much hail and still seeing a gnarly storm off in the distance forces you to reflect on the choices you've made that have put you in such a situation. I marveled at the power of Mother Nature and laughed at myself for choosing to be in her path. Kit and I camped with Napoleon in a small field, unknowingly just a mile behind Ollie and High Roller. So, it looks real nice from this direction behind me. But uh, there's been some gnarly storms. 
Here comes some thunder. Honestly, that was kind of a quiet one. This is some of like the gnarliest thunder I've ever heard. Besides maybe when we were in the winds and had that crazy hailstorm. And you know, I just I'm not stoked about it. The climbs in this section were well graded and quite beautiful. Between the tread and consistent grade, I almost felt like I was on the PCT and I began to make peace with my biggest enemy, the incline. Because no amount of agonizing over elevation gain is going to make any difference to the fact that I still have to climb. Dread does nothing but make the whole experience miserable and nothing to mitigate the fact that the only way out is through. Unpleasant things will come, but anxiety about those things does not decrease their inevitability. Only ensure the suffering will be prolonged. I must take things as they come and trust in my endurance to get me through. After the all day up and down, we came upon a beautiful campsite that we simply could not pass up and decided to end our day early. The next day, we climbed Rainbow Mountain, and I called my parents at the top with the small amount of cell reception I got. It was windy, so our conversation didn't last very long. After Rainbow Mountain, I descended and had lunch alone at a peaceful lake. Napoleon passed while I was eating, and we discussed everyone's plan for the afternoon. We'd all been on the fence about taking an earlier road into town, and as the shortcut grew closer, so did the temptation. After lunch, I began the ascent to Goat Flats and the official Anaconda cutoff an alternate we had already decided to take to save time and visit the town of Anaconda, a place we'd heard nothing but good things about. On the ascent, disaster struck, and I had every through hiker's worst fear come true. Digestive troubles and the trusting of a fart led to the outcome you're probably already imagining, and it solidified my decision to go into town early. After a quick cleanup, I was very, very ready to be in town. Storm Lake Pass temporarily distracted me from my misfortune though, and all things considered, life was still pretty good. I made it to Anaconda by dinner time and stuffed my face with the McDonald's before heading to the hostel. The hostel in Anaconda impressed us and we decided to save our time there by taking a zero. Plus, Kid's best friend Brandon was meeting us for the next section of trail and we wanted some time to resupply and send boxes.